What's going on? What's going on? Damn, yo. There's traffic out here. The light is crazy. Not, man, this is crazy. But anyway, let's get into some boxing real quick. Gary Russell Jr. Um, I previously did a video talking about um, something that you know, Terrence Crawford could do. Um, if he doesn't want to wait around for Earl Spence, he doesn't want to wait around for Manny Pacquiao, and he doesn't want to face anybody that's not a champion. Um, it was in a previous video, you can check that out. Um, in this video, I want to kind of go over what Gary Russell can do. You know, because these are two dudes that have kind of been linked to each, with each other. Uh, they're looking at fighting each other, I guess. I mean, what Gary Russell's trying to get about against him. And, um, you know, what else could he do? What realistically could he do? You know what I mean? To get himself into the, catapult himself into the space uh, that he wants to be in. Um, obviously, one of them, the, the normal way route that he could have gone was to be more active in the last couple of years. Fight like twice a year. You know, just twice a year. And then besides fighting twice a year, um, what he also could have done was, while doing that, is just do what Dante Wilder did and what Earl Spence did, which is go to all the boxing matches. Go to the boxing matches where all the reporters are there, all the, you know, YouTubers are there who basically they're the ones who have the eyes of the boxing public and just do interviews. Continuously do interviews, press these people. When they fight, go to their events. You know what I'm saying? And put them into a space where they get put into a corner where you end up growing this following because people are, quote, scared of you. People don't want to have beef with you. People don't want to fight you. They want no smoke with you. And it actually, when you do that and you keep yourself in the public eye, it kind of catapults you to a different level. And you get into the space where now you're this, you know, this you know, pariah, I guess you could say, this guy that's seen as, you know, as being pretty much, he, they catapults you to basically being like, hey, that's the guy. You ain't itch unless you fight that man. Your viewership, everything goes up. And then you get put into a space where the guys, the other dudes look at you and say, damn, I can make a lot of money fighting that guy, even though he might bust my ish. Yeah, let me go fight him. It's worth the risk now. But he chose not to go that route. Um, he chose to just fight once a year. And besides like a, a one, two month of promotion that he does where he gets everybody all hyped up, he used to just disappear, you know, out of sight, out of mind for like a whole year. Then when it's time to fight again, then he decided to skip to get for gab again. You know, but this is what it is now, though. But for right now, where he's at right now, what he can do, I say these would be the options for him. Um, according to him, he said being the WBC champion at 126 pounds, he can jump up to 130 pounds and automatically become the mandatory for that 130 pound championship. That he can automatically do that where he gets that fight next. Now, if he's able to do that and he's able to pull that off, I think that's what he should do then. I think he should jump up and wait, go up to 100 um, to 130 pounds, and fight for that WBC belt at 130 pounds. You know, if you can do that and you can win that, whatever. Tell him just you know you're not going to go negotiate. It's not going to work well because you know they were top rank. Just tell him you want to go directly into purse bids, go directly into purse bids, get it done, and then you know whoever wins win the purse bids. That's where the fights help. If he doesn't want to fight you, they can just release that belt. Now then, now you have the WC belt. Now that you have the WBC, now that you have the WBC belt, you get put into a space where you have options. You know, now a unification with Tank ends up looking like a really big fight. That's a big, huge now pay-per-view fight. You know, where you both can fight and end up making a substantial amount of money off of that. If you're still, they believe you're still not in the space where you can get that particular fight that you want, your other option now would be to take on Diaz. You beat Diaz before. You know, his first shot at 126. But now he's not cha he's a champion at 130 pounds. And I don't think Tevin Farmer's gonna get that belt. I don't get that champ that rematch. But if Tevin Farmer does get that rematch and he gets that belt, cool. You can even face Tevin Farmer. In a unification bout now at 130 pounds. Now all of a sudden now you get two bouts and you're a unified champion at 130 pounds. You're basically the man at this point. Where people, you get kind of put people into a space where they got to come see you. You know, because if they don't see you, they basically have no credibility whatsoever at 130 pounds. Doesn't matter if Shakur Stevens fights a herring or he fights whoever has that other belt. The WBO belt at 130 pounds and he got that belt. Nobody's nothing at that weight class until they see you at that particular point. Because you're that unified champion. Okay, you're the big boy now at the, in that division. You know? Now you're the big boy in that division. You got the IBF and you got the WBC belts.
you got the most prestigious belt, basically the two most prestigious belts in, in boxing, I would say, is a, is a WC. Even though WBC is watered down and it's looking like they're just a trinket belt at this point. But they're still holding on. The most recognized is the WBC, and I think the most prestigious belt right now, the most respected belt is the IBF. So you got those two belts now around your waist. You know, where Shakur can come see you if he wants it, because he'll have that other belt by then. You'll have that WBO where he can come see you. If not, then it does, there's no other bout that makes any sense for Tank. Unless he's fighting Lomachenko, no other bout makes any kind of sense except fighting you. That's it. You know, you can have this big, huge bout with Tank Davidson. Shoot, where if you win that, now you got three belts around your waist. Do the rematch and you win that. You still got three belts around your waist. Well, now it's like, yo, Shakur, what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? Let's do this undisputed bout where there is no bigger fight than you, obviously, at that point. And if Shakur steps up to that pay-per-view, you do a big-ass pay-per-view, take on Shakur, you become undisputed, off into the sunset, because I know you do want to retire real soon. And you're out of here, undisputed. With an issue of money in your bank account. It's a route that's possible. Definitely with the WBUC, according to him, getting that belt. And then getting that IBF unification. Especially and especially with the way the zone's going. It's not like whoever has that, you know, whoever whoever has that belt's gonna be able to make a lot of money on the zone. Them paychecks ain't coming in like that no more. It's a wrap for that. You know, so they'll be willing to let you go to another platform to fight. You know, and I don't know if Diaz has anything. He's no longer with Golden Boy. So unless MT Global is going to say, nah, F it. We're going to have you fight this bum and just we're going to pay you that M. Unless that's going to happen, you can take on Diaz. You know, or you can take on Farmer. Farmer Farmer already messed up one time by not taking that $2 million deal from Javante Tank Davis. Javante Tank Davis making the money. He's making his money. Now, quote the money that the zone was offering. He's, he's making that. You know, Farm on the other hand went far for half a million instead of taking that two million and took a loss. He doesn't have his belt anymore. And it's questionable to see if he's even going to get another shot at his own belt. So, it's the options, you know. Instead of just sitting there talking, you know, instead of sitting there trying to jump up 50 weight classes to take on somebody on a, on a kamikaze suicide mission. Against Terrence Crawford, you know, because I, you know, in a previous video, I said I don't think that fight's going to happen because what I believe, you know, the financial demands are going to be for Gary Russell. Well, don't get it twisted. I ain't talking. I, I might talk about the moves that Terrence Crawford makes and the, the bad business savvy that he has. You know, he could be a bigger superstar. He'd be getting paid substantially more money than he's getting paid right now. But you know, I, I, I'll talk bad about those routes, but I'll never talk nothing about his skills, though. That's hell a bad dude, and he'll. That'll be an ugly fight, you know. That'll be an ugly fight. Gary Russell will get up bad. He'll get hurt. Go to the hospital, get your brain checked out bad. It'll be ugly, man. Washed. <laughs> I don't care what skills people say. Yes, you'll get washed, smashed up, demolished, obliterated. Turn into mush. Like the what they call them, meat tenderizer, the beater thing you beat the meat with? Yeah. Pause. Eesh. We'll be ugly. So this is a it's a hundred percent something that's you know that's something that's an optional optional and it's very possible for him to do. You know? He doesn't seem to want to go that route or do that, which I don't understand, but it is an option for him. But we'll see what ends up happening with both of them in the next couple of weeks. For now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.